in the words of Lloyd Grossman, who would drive a car like this? Today we're back at Smart Technic. I say back because I've been before. Heading to Smart Technic in Birmingham. This morning we're back at Smart Technic. Smart Technic. So today Scarless is here for the first time and he's uh, having a good old check over and service by Ben and Jack at Smart Technic. Let's go and have a look at the playground, as I call it. See what Jack and Ben has got parked around here this time. I'm sure some of these have been here for a whole long time. But equally, I bet you there's some new ones. If you've seen the previous videos, we're going to have to try and play spot the difference, aren't we? Look at all the parts available there. Now, the car lover in me, I'm going to be honest, everyone wants to save each and every one. But of course, unfortunately, I cannot particularly wanted to save this one there was a period of time last year where i was hoping i was going to be able to acquire this car because the owner of this car i believe they're no longer able to contact them and the car's been here probably for at least two years and it's a, a real shame and really fancy saving it and i'm not going to say yeah i'm never to say never but at the moment it's looking unlikely but i just don't like to see cars that can be saved sitting there not being used yeah that wasn't like that last time was it Right, I'm trying not to get stunk. Wah! Teddy bear. <laughs> oh, God. I love it. I call this a playground because I just love... I just love looking around. See, Ben's still got the... Uh, the extra roof fitted to the 4.4. But you can see why quite often a customer like myself can turn up at Smart Technic. Like when I came with Squirt for the very first time, and I asked Ben if I source the glass from Mercedes, can he fit it? And then it's like, well, just go out and pick a glass that you like and get it sorted there and then. I don't know whether I'd call it the playground, actually, or whether I'd call it the graveyard, what do you reckon? But either way, it's fantastic if you need a specific part and it just so happens to be sitting out here and anyone that knows smart technic will know this car we mentioned this car before on the previous video everyone is beavis poor beavis as the train goes into birmingham poor beavis is i'm sure going to be saved one day but um as you can see it's going to need rescuing just from the vegetation alone but Beavis needs to be saved because it's a very, very, very early left-hand drive smart. I'm, I'm looking at corners because Scarlet needs a better rear corner and a bonnet. So like I did with Squirt, I'm just looking around to see if there's anything that I can use, but uh, maybe not. Anyway, let's go back to see what's happening with Scarlet. I'm going to get back over to vegetation. <laughs>
in the words of Lloyd Grossman, who would drive a car like this? Ben, of course! <laughs> oh dear. It's actually a few days later and you've just caught me reading a Roots Group book. Very good book. I'd recommend it. If you want to know any more details about it, ask me in the comments and I'll let you know. I've also been reading this one. Of course, I like my Rovers. These are a couple of recent birthday presents because apparently I've become one year older again and it's exactly the same date as every other year. I'm now 56 years of age and I can't believe it. It's shocking. It's going my list. So I decided I'd put both Scarlet, my Smart 4-2 Passion, Brabus, not a Brabus, Brabus, and my Tanto, named Keiko, on the same video because ultimately, a long time ago, Ben had agreed that he'd, uh, well, I think he'd, he, he wanted to see Keiko anyway, but he agreed to um, give the car a check over and give it an oil and filter change, put new plugs in and stuff like that. So, that's what we've done, as you've probably seen in the clips in the video already. So we're going to list what was done already to Scarlet, the car we're obviously sitting in at the moment, before I'd bought it. This is just things that we've picked up on while Ben and Jack were having a look around the car. And then we'll discuss what we've had done to Scarlet and what the plans are, because not everything's been done so far. Anyway, moving swiftly on, we'll start with what was done. It's already had a flexi hose on the exhaust. I know I've read that this is a relatively common problem and it's just good to see that that's already been done on this car. Also had an engine mount. It's also had new front disc and pads recently. So again, that's something else that's unlikely to be needed for quite some time. And it's had another common issue done, which is a coolant pipe. Apparently it's quite a common issue indeed. So again, that was done before we bought the car, which is good. Now, what did we have done on the day? Well, as you'll have seen on the clips, we've had the full service. That included plugs, but of course, as this is a 451, with a 1-litre Mitsubishi engine, it doesn't need six spark plugs, because, of course, Squirt, my 450, is actually a twin spark, so that needs six. This only needs three, so it's had three new plugs. It's hard to say whether the plugs were the original, but they certainly did look old. It's had new filters. Now, the cabin one that came out of this car was, was well... I guess it started white, but was uh, pretty much black. Is that an indication for poor service across the life of this car? We don't know, because the rest of the car does seem fine. But anyway, it obviously hadn't been done for a long time. But sticking with how many times this car may have had a service in the past, both belts were done, which is just pretty much standard anyway, when you're having the big service with Ben and Jack. Um, but the belts that came off the car were dated 2011, although Ben has assured me that Mercedes don't actually have a specific time schedule for the belts anyway. And the belts were fine, to be fair. It's had new coolant because the coolant colour wasn't quite right, and we think that's because the coolant pipe was changed. It's lost some coolant. Different coolant's been put in. 
I'm Mr. Fussy, aren't I? And all cars that come to the semi-retirement home for cars get looked after. So it was a no-brainer. New coolant's gone in. The brake fluid needed doing anyway. So that's had, it's had new brake fluid done. The front near side brake was sticking slightly. That's been sorted. I think there was just a bit of copper grease needed somewhere. But anyway, that's all fine. The rear side, the rear side, the rear near side brake was also sticking a little. I think there's, I don't know whether we filmed it, but I've been saying to Fran every time I, because I always roll these cars back into position. So I tend to sort of push them a little. And I remember saying to Fran, my wife, oh, the 451 is definitely heavier. Well, it is heavier, but it isn't that much heavier than Squirt. It's because the, the brake was sticking a little. And that, I was, that we found was actually down to a, a cylinder. So it's had a new cylinder fitted. The high level brake lamp, there's only one bulb, even though it looks like there's more. That had stopped working by the time I'd got to Ben, so that's had a new ball bin. And then the thing I was really pleased about was the side skirt. I'd got this suspicion, and I said on the reveal video that maybe that side skirt would need bodging because it had basically come away from the side, of course. Well, Jack took off that skirt, and the bracket that fits behind it did some fiddling, and actually the skirt was absolutely fine, and it now fits absolutely lovely on the car. So that was kind of a no-cost fix, and I like no-cost fixes. It's like a little art beat, Gary. Yeah. Ah! Silence. It's something I'm not used to. Now we come to an item <clears throat> that we didn't know about, because considering how many cars I bought, I obviously didn't check it thoroughly enough when I was buying this car from uh, a garage called BMC. I'll, I'll, I'll put a link to them. In the description below because Glenn at BMC to be fair has treated me very fairly and I'm planning at the time of filming this to go up and do a little thing about the, 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 the place that he has because it seems to be a great company. Glenn is an honest chap and we all know certainly in the UK how car dealerships are always treated with a bit of, how can I say, I wouldn't say disdain but mistrust. Glenn is quite obviously not that guy and I personally would recommend the garage so Happy days, we'll go and film that at some point. But I didn't pick up on the fact, Glenn obviously didn't pick up on the fact, that the air con wasn't actually working. And the reason it wasn't working is because, of course, the condenser is at the front of the car and it's got some minor holes in it and those minor holes have released the gas. One quick email to Glenn and one quick phone call back from Glenn means that that's going to get sorted by Glenn, or should I say Glenn will be picking up the invoice from Ben, so the car is already booked in at Smart Technic again for Ben to do the work. Now, when we've talked about filters, oil, everything being done on this car, the one thing I would normally get done because the car's over 10 years old now is the gearbox oil. But we haven't had the gearbox oil done. But why haven't we had the gearbox oil done? I'm going to save that for a future video. But if you can guess why that might be, let me know in the comments below. That's it really for Scarlet. So we'll move over to Keiko. So of course with Keiko, getting parts for a JDM import isn't always easy. And I kind of knew that before we did, before I took the decision to import the car. But things like standard service items, I thought, well, they're probably not going to be too bad. But you're relying on the information that you can find on the internet to get the right part numbers. So I took a slight chance with the part numbers for the plugs. The rather expensive Iridium plugs that will no doubt last for years. And I took, therefore, the same chance with the oil filter. We knew that the oil that uh, Ben uses at Smart Technic is absolutely suitable for Keiko, so I wasn't worried about the oil. I have also managed over time to get the part numbers off the two belts, because, of course, you've got an aircon belt and a drive belt. Well, not a drive belt. I guess it's a belt that, that, that's power, powering or going around with the alternator, isn't it? But you know what I mean. I've got the part numbers for those. But when I went to Smart Technic, all I went actually with was a purple oil filter because, well, you could order a purple one, so just why wouldn't you? Uh, and the free spark plugs that it needed when it was a bit of a fingers crossed moment, particularly for Jack, because he didn't want to damage the oil filter coming off the car only to find that the car would be off the road if the one that I'd ordered was incorrect. So they took a lot of care to get the filter off, which was a stubborn thing, but Jack got it off at the end. And it turned out that the filter was fine. Slightly shorter, but the correct filter for the car, so that was all good. And the spark plugs, again, were all good. Again, difficult to date how old the spark plugs were in Keiko. 
but Keiko in general, Jack and Ben noticed, seems to be extremely well serviced. It's been obviously quite well cared for in Japan, so the belts don't need changing at the moment, but I've got the part numbers for them. Uh, the brake pads and discs don't need changing at the moment, but I need to get part numbers for them. If anyone knows a good JDM supplier that I've just happened to have not found on the internet, let me know in the comments below, everyone. I was able to get the part numbers off the shock absorbers, which on the front, of course, well, not necessarily, of course, but they are identical, but on the rear, they are actually shaped slightly different at the top. So we've now got three different part numbers for the shock absorbers for the car. And the only thing that they noted on the whole car, apart from the fact that the condition underneath, unsurprisingly, because they don't sort their roads over there, was absolutely mint, and I'm going to get it all wax old or rust treated or, or whatever to give it a, a, a good chance, because ultimately it's in such good condition, why not look after it? They did notice that there's just a slight, call it a weep, if that, coming from the tray that sits underneath the CVT gearbox. Now, it's quite obviously the gasket on that, for whatever reason, has had a, just a minor weep, but a check of the gearbox level and gearbox uh, oil um, quality. There's nothing wrong with it at all. So I think that's more of a keep an eye on. We'll see what it's doing next year. But otherwise, Keiko is in excellent condition. I'm not surprised, really. It's a good car, bless it. So... That's a lot of work done at Smart Technic. I now own three cars that uh, the legends that are Ben and Jack are going to be looking after. And I'm happy about that, to be honest. They do such a good job. And their link, of course, is always in the videos relative to the car that's on the videos in the description below. If you're not tried Smart Technic and you're considering buying a Smart or you own a Smart, you really need to try them. I'm going to leave it there, everyone. Um, thank you very much for watching this video. Hope that's been a useful update on both Scarlet, the 451 Smart, and uh, Keiko, my Daihatsu Tantu Custom RS, no less. <coughs> Enjoy whatever it is you're driving. I'll see you soon. Oh, I almost forgot, everyone. I don't know if you can see on camera. Can you see what's hanging up there? That's a bonnet. It's a bonnet with a Smart badge on. You may not be able to see the Smart badge, or you might be able to see the Smart badge. But more importantly, it's a black bonnet. It's obviously come off this car, hasn't it? It's that bonnet that had the big lacquer peel. Well, that lacquer peel's gone. Thanks again to Ben and Jack. Of course, I fitted that bonnet myself when I got home. Because I actually picked it up while I was in the Tanto. Because we forgot to check whether it got any on the day that this car went into Smart Technic. But because I took the Tanto the day after, I managed to remember. And, um, well, Scarlett's got a new bonnet on. Well, I say new. It's actually what's called a seconds. Seconds in the UK basically means it's a new item and it came in a new smart bag. I'll put an insect clip in now. But it had got a couple of minor flaws in it, which meant that basically Mercedes wouldn't sell it new to a customer. But that's more than good enough for Mr. Big sitting here because that's just lovely. This hasn't got that lack appeal. The improvements are going to continue on this car, everyone. Stay tuned.